So here we are guys, the fourth and final demo from Ian Fennelly's Urban Sketching for Beginners course. As well as talking about some of the things within this sketch, I'd also like to think about the bigger picture and what I have personally learnt from this course. As such, I am going to try and condense that into five of my key takeaways that I hope to remember and integrate into both my mindset and sketching process. So this final module of Ian's Urban Sketching for Beginners course is of Weil Cop in Shrewsbury in England. Each module of the course has featured a different aspect of this same town. So I tried a different strategy again for this module. I decided to watch the entire module and then take the reference photo and Ian's final sketch, as well as knowledge of the colors that he chose for this one, and then decided to go more of my own way with it. And as I mentioned in one of the previous videos in this series, I think the key to learning from an artist with such a unique and distinctive style like Ian is to not really copy him but just try and learn techniques or ideas from him that you can integrate into your own sketching process. Now I understand for beginners this is obviously going to take some time as you won't feel like you have your own process yet and actually if you are a complete beginner I think this course is going to be a tiny bit intimidating in my personal opinion. I think it's probably better for more what I'd call advanced beginners, people with some experience. And I would suggest actually if you are a beginner, total beginner, do try and copy Ian just because, you know, take it step by step. But also just remember don't beat yourself up if it doesn't look like his sketch because no matter how hard you try, it will never look like his. Um, his, his process is so intuitive and so some parts are so abstract it's just you're never gonna make it look like his so just remember that and do what you can and take from Ian's style what you can or what you want to. I sort of still feel I don't have a defined process myself I mean I have like a bunch of them I have the process that I teach in my um, sketch your adventures course which is quite a uh, step by step and that's definitely what I was doing basically for the last several years but I think more currently I'm trying to do different things. For me, I don't really see the point in just keeping on doing the same thing. I'd rather actually try out different styles and experiment with different things. So that's kind of what I've decided to do for myself. And to be honest, I, I don't think I'll ever have a defined style because I, I am just one of those people. I get bored easily and I just like to change things up. So, you know, I, I'm embracing the self-knowledge and I'll just keep trying different things and of course sharing them with you here. <laughs> so my final sketch may or may not look anything like Ian's, but that's okay. I didn't really want my sketch to be the point of this video. I just really wanted to share some of the big things that I've learned from Ian during this course. And uh, yeah, if you want to check this course out, the link is in the description. Ian does have loads of other courses as well, from sketching pubs through to sketching at the zoo. And that's definitely the one that I want to try next. Okay, so here are my biggest takeaways from this particular course that I'll be doing my best to integrate into my sketching process moving forward. Some things I did already know, but going through this course and hearing Ian's perspective on, on these things has kind of validated or confirmed some things I was doing anyway. So that's, you know, that's always good. Okay, so my, my first main takeaway is forget the details. The main thing that really seems to affect the success of your drawing is perspective, especially in street scenes, which are the main focus of this course. And you'll see that Ian places a lot of emphasis on getting that sense of perspective correct, as this will make or break the sketch in terms of believability. So, you know, he can play with wonky walls and squiggles for hanging baskets, but if the overall scene isn't in like a realistic perspective then it's just not going to work and of course he does exaggerate perspective sometimes but again the overall rules of parallel lines radiating from the vanishing point or vanishing points is very much stuck to and therefore that's what everything else is pinned to that would be yeah my first main takeaway from this course when sketching things like street scenes like this and if you'd like a basic 
but brief overview of perspective, do check out my another one of my videos on YouTube. I'll stick it up in the corner here for you. Okay, so the second thing is simplifying tricky details and suggesting things instead. So this kind of follows on from what I mentioned in point one. If you take this course, it will become apparent that Ian does not draw every last detail he sees in a scene. He takes huge liberties with just indicating things with squiggles, like any kind of foliage, trees or hanging baskets, stuff like that. And he loosely approximates shapes of lanterns or church spires, and, and he will definitely exaggerate them as well, just to make them a bit more quirky. And he also simplifies things like shop fronts and doorways, especially as they recede into the distance as well. So if you get one of Ian's sketches and you really zoom in, really look at it quite closely, you'll see exactly what I mean. But obviously when you sort of step back from it, you just don't even really particularly noticed to be honest and the fantastic thing this has taught me is that it really just doesn't matter you can totally get away with not drawing things accurately because the human eye can still tell what it is and it kind of fills in any gaps or makes sense of it in its own way and this doesn't detract from the overall sketch if anything i think it actually adds more personality the third major thing that I have learned and have been trying my best to put into practice within my own work is that tone is more important than colour. So as we all know, Ian's use of colour is not literal or realistic to what is in the scene. And I think that's what attracts quite a few of us, at least in the first instance, to his work. And just, you know, how he can use bright purples and greens, yet we still completely recognise the place he has sketched. If we get the darks and the lights where they need to be, then colour doesn't actually matter too much. In terms of colour, Ian uses a limited palette of three colours for each of the modules in this course, and he shows how he uses those colours and how he mixes them together to get sort of interesting and more realistic tones as well. I haven't actually practiced much with using a limited palette, but after completing this course, I do now feel like I understand how to use three colors together, but also in like a very non-traditional way, which is quite refreshing as well. And speaking of traditions, don't be afraid to break traditional rules and experiment. For example, the way Ian uses white watercolour would definitely be frowned upon by traditional watercolour artists, but this is not traditional art. This is mixed media, it's experimental, and this is Ian's world. It's the way he sketches and the way he uses his materials to achieve his wonderful style. So bear in mind as you experiment that some things will be unexpected successes and some things will make a mess, but that's okay. Not every sketchy adventure runs smooth, and that is why it is called an adventure. <laughs> so number five then, another major thing I've learned from Ian is to not be afraid to sketch what's not there or edit what you see. I knew this anyway, and I kind of cover this concept myself in my course Sketch Your Adventures, however, it's kind of nice when you hear it from one of your sketching heroes. Um, it's kind of validation in my mind, but Ian does actually take this a bit further as well. So from his lessons, I learned that if you need to move a road sign to make your sketch look better, you can do that. And if you want to include a shop or a pub name, you don't need to copy the exact lettering style. You can definitely do it your own way and it still works and don't worry about the exact number of windows on buildings. It's more important to get the shapes right and to tell the story. And as Ian says in this course, which I completely agree with, life's too short to count windows. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a cheeky bonus tip as well. Don't be afraid of using black. Ian adds uh, black with his Tombow markers to great effect. It really adds drama and contrast. I use a black brush pen and again it comes down to you know contrast and I bang on about this all the time in, in a lot of my videos and my course and yeah I'm always talking about contrast. Leaving areas of white and adding some areas of pure black really amplify the contrast and drama in a sketch so that's just a little bonus tip for you. 
checking out the sketch that I did for this module, I was very happy with the drawing that I did. So the actual um, lines and perspective and whatnot, I was, I was pretty happy with that. I think I went probably a bit too far with the drawing stage before I applied the watercolour though. Probably should have painted before adding some of the areas of black and doing some of the hatching, but that's okay, I just got carried away and again I wasn't following along with Ian, I just decided to sort of do my own thing. The painting stage is the bit that makes me quite anxious. Um, so to start with, I never have the same colours as Ian does, so of course it's never going to look quite right, but again, then I have to remind myself that the idea is not to produce an identical sketch to Ian. Even if I do have the same colours as Ian, it's never going to look like Ian's, so that's fine. So I guess the anxiety is because Ian's painting process is just so abstract or wild, it's just not very... I, not very easy to follow along with it and so I decided to do my own thing as I said while looking at Ian's final sketch and he does have very distinct areas within his sketch of cool which is like the blue and then warm which is kind of the orangey browny colours. I wasn't very happy with my choice of orange it's actually called cadmium red light I think as it's quite it actually turned out to be quite a cool orange and I think I could have done with something just a bit warmer and a bit richer. So I think that, for me, in my mind, detracts from, from this sketch. I used a ton of water and I did remember to add white in places too, which in some of the other ones I've forgotten about using the white. And uh, yeah, I had to leave it to dry for ages because obviously you use so much water. So yeah, I don't mind how it came out, but it definitely doesn't have the impact of Ian's sketch. And again, I think that comes down to contrast. I don't think I left enough white space. So it kind of, to my eye, it just leads it to feeling a bit like flat tonally. And I had to be very gentle using my Faber-Castell Pit Artist pens on top of the watercolor on this particular paper. It just doesn't seem to like it very much and it can actually end up damaging the surface of the paper. The Pit Artist pens don't blend out nicely like the Tombow markers do, because I think the Tombow markers are almost like watercolor markers or something. They just, they blend nicely. So some of the shading's not as smooth as I would like it to be in this in the sketch. Um, again, though, I'm happy with the drawing itself and the sense of perspective that I got. And I always learn well by doing, and I really enjoyed drawing this scene. Just like Ian says he does, I just completely lose myself when I'm drawing and I agree with him that drawing is certainly a mindfulness practice. You forget about everything else for a while and you just zone out and you're just concentrating on the lines you're making or the areas you're painting and it's just really fun. Ian loves drawing so much, he says it throughout the course and this just permeates the entire course as well. So if you want to learn from someone with a completely unique style, who uses materials in a very non-traditional way and who loves every second of what they're doing, then I'd certainly recommend this course. I hope you've enjoyed this little mini series of seeing me try out Ian's um, Urban Sketching for Beginners course. It's been really fun to go through it and it's actually been nice having to make a video on each module because it's actually forced me to do it. I reckon we're all the same where we do buy courses and we're guilty of not completing all of them or not actually physically doing the work. Maybe we watch them but don't really do it. So yeah, having this kind of commitment to making a video about each module's really forced me to actually do this. So it's it's been really good, really useful and I hope you guys have found some value from seeing me have a go at these modules. So again, if you want to check out the course, link's in the description. And otherwise, I will see you in the next video.